like I don't want to have too much of an angled drive going into the into the garage. Looks a little. I don't know. I don't. Well, and the thing that I was thinking is, once you come up the driveway, the house is kind of facing you, facing like the entrance. Hold that. Stop, Brayden. Please don't. It's right about here. So bring this this way to like about right, it over to this side for right here. Brayden. So I think we could bring that stake well, kind, kind of what I was saying. back so in here. That, I think it's going to pull that garage around about right where we want everything to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then the house is going to feel, it, to me it felt like it was going to be like, like, they're, like, it's, like you're, it's jammed in right here. I, to me, if this comes out a little bit, I think it's going to set better. Okay. I'm Jameson. And I'm Jamie. And this is Brayden and Maddie. We recently took a leap of faith, trading in our home in Georgia for some space in my parents' house. We gave up my high-paying corporate job to pursue our dream of building stuff and empowering others. Whether we're building a family, building a business, building a house, or building a table, we like to do it ourselves. This is our DIY life. Okay, so as you can tell, we've started building a house, but I'm gonna give you a recap, catch you up to speed, let you know how we got to this point. Back in 2010, we got married, um, and then I started work for Gulfstream Aerospace as an aerospace engineer um, in Savannah, Georgia. A couple years later, we started a website called rogueengineer.com where we provided plans. We essentially designed and built our own furniture. Mm -hmm. Um, and then provided plans to the web, interwebs. the interwebs, the web sphere. I like the interwebs. The, yeah, okay. I just like it. <laughs> it was a couple years later. Yeah. We started doing well enough to where we could um, quit my full-time job and go full-time with the website. In order to do so. We decided to move to Michigan to be by my family. Yeah. And we are currently living in my parents' house. But. We um, were able to save up enough money from the sale of our house in Georgia that we bought a house that we could flip. Um, so we bought a 1950s cottage and completely renovated it, gutted it, and uh, now we've got it back on the market. During that, that project timeline, we were, at, we were able to actually find some property that we wanted to build this house on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like. Well, 20 minutes ago. I don't know if we should get ahead of ourselves. Because... We're not ahead of ourselves, but we signed a contract on a piece of property and we're so excited. I'm so excited. I love it so much. Um, it's five acres and it's a beautifully wooded private lot and it's close to town. So we fell in love with it and then it was on to the house plans. This was a little. I think it turned out good. It was a little bit more difficult to lay out. Yeah, but one thing that we wanted to do with the basement was we wanted to make sure that we had this full walkout across the back. Yeah. And then we also added a walkout in the front. Well, and my thought too with the walkout and all this closet space was um, in the winter, I'd rather the kids walk into the basement and leave all their wet snow gear down yeah, there. Yeah, good luck with that. Well, I'm going to force it. There's kind of the front of the house. It's a window right there, that's right. It's a good window, huh? Do we need to go over all the front of the house stuff? Your dad's calling me. So we found a house that we agreed on, which was not easy to do. It wasn't a half bath, it was a full bath and it was connected to Madison's room with the tub. Oh, got it. No, it wasn't. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, it wasn't. And then no. shrunk the office down no, it and wasn't. turned that to it was... a half bath. No, so, you're confused. I'm not. That's what It happened. was not two bedrooms, three baths. It was three bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. It was. Okay. Because that one's, that's why that's goofy. All right. Let's just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> so we had, so originally the house was a three bedroom, three bath, but one of the bathrooms was shared with, um, with the public or with the, the yes. public. <laughs> it, it, was, it was the public. It had, it, had dual, it had two doors into it, one from the hallway <laughs> and one from uh, Madison's room. Instead, we closed that off so that she could have that bathroom to herself and then we turned uh, the office into, we shrank it and turned it into a half bathroom. 
from there, we were able to go to zoning. So in order to get zoning approval, you just got to jump through so many hoops. To you do have this. to have a plot plan and you have to show them where you're going to put your house and and other yeah. things that you're going to put on the property. One of those was like a barn. You have to show them where your well and your septic is going to be and they have to be a certain distance away from each other. We did that. We got that knocked out. And then we also had to have a septic permit. But in order well to get the septic, septic permit, permit, you have to have your well in place. So yeah. we had to get the well drilled to get the septic permit yeah. to then get our building permit. So yeah, our lot was so, well first yeah. because they're, I think they've had some issues with wells actually, whether or not they're able to get water out of them out there. The idea was to get the barn done before we started on the house. However, that did not work out and they're kind of both happening at the same time. So that's the end of my recap and now let's get right back into the construction of the house. Where are the kids? They're good, right? Uh, they're they're not All right, so as of yesterday, we broke ground on the house. They started digging the basement and um, they've got quite the hole to dig. So the way that the house is gonna sit in here, it's gonna sit kind of on this hill, or in this hill, because we're gonna have a basement that's pretty much, so what yeah. they've gotta do is they've essentially gotta move this hill and put it over here, because this is where our garage is gonna go. So they've gotta build up this area, because that's gonna be up at the main level of the house. And it makes me a little bit nervous, because we spent a good amount of time yesterday kind of like laying out exactly how the house is gonna go. It's like at a slight angle when you pull into the driveway. The thing that has me only a little bit concerned is we're essentially moving this hill to this side and now our garage is like how, how tall. Our garage, like, the floor of the garage is gonna be like eight feet off of the current grade. Yeah. So we've gotta also taper, our driveway. taper the driveway into it. Um, so there's going to be a lot of excavating and grading and backfill and all that stuff going yeah. on. So I'm curious to see how that kind of is all going to go yeah, together. He's going to have to move some of it over here for the driveway and then we'll probably start tapering the driveway up about here up well, to the This to is the what I'm garage. because it's a lot of dirt and I don't want the hill to look so... He's also going to have to fill in the garage. He's going to have to slope down the sides and then, well, then I mean, we can take this driveway. For this, James. Huh? Oh, you mean so make this all level? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm Whoa. saying take this driveway and cut it right in here and then essentially right here is where the hill tapers down to this level and this driveway comes like this and then that is the driveway and you have access to the barn like you do. So essentially some of this would come out and be turned into driveway this would be like your little grassy area. The rest of it would be just a big driveway. Yeah. And we'll talk I'm with him when he gets out. here about if there's anything that we can do to ensure that those trees don't come down. Because if we lose those trees, I mean, it's do just we not have the any, same property. Is there any chance of rain here soon? I think so. Maddie, you are filthy now. I was here with them the other day when we laid out the foundation and these represent the corners of the house and all the foundation walls mm -hmm. and um, they did a good job of making sure everything was square but you're just but, gonna double check well I'm gonna double check yeah that corner on it okay it really right still now. I'm doing the best I can that's but about it's about feels of shaky I think that's close enough what are you it's like a quarter of an inch off. Let's do this one. Is this going to stress you out? Because I feel like you're going to go home and have bad dreams about angles. <laughs> My three, four, five was off. 
Maybe we should try a 261. <laughs> Okay, so the obviously the the exterior walls are going to be the the poured foundation walls, but you'll see the squares throughout the middle of the foundation or the middle of the basement, and those are actually going to support posts that carry a um, a steel beam that will uh, that we can extend our trusses over to overhang that and uh, run the floor the main floor off of that across it over in here you'll see the garage is uh, this is actually footings for the garage the problem was normally you just do a slab so you'll do um, a smaller wall or just even just like a block uh, up 42 inches or whatever down below the uh, just do a frost footing the problem with this here was this area was kind of low so we have to build this up in order to bring it up to the main level of the house. So what we had to do was we're actually putting eight foot foundation walls on top of those footings to get the garage to where it needs to be. And then we'll backfill that garage in and, uh, and pour a slab over top of it. All right, so we're here today pouring the foundation. The trucks are all here, but it was a little unsafe to get the concrete trucks around the back side of the, of the house. Um, so we brought in a pump, pumper. pump crane, which is essentially gonna, they're all gonna dump that concrete into a bin, and then that is gonna pump it up and around. They control it with a little remote. It goes all the way around the foundation. Make sure we get those foundation walls nice and, and solid. Here comes another concrete truck. <laughs> because there's a lot of trucks around, okay? Oh, they're gonna hit them out. Bitch. Oh, gross! Oh, that thing is so gross! Oh. <laughs> oh, he should have been here for that part. He would have loved it. Yeah. I tried to take it. I told him about dog fighting. Dog fighting that they'll be big dog here. Okay, so we got all the walls poured. It's much quieter now. The concrete trucks are gone. However, we did come up two yards short. Um, the last concrete truck is on its way back now with those two yards to finish off the garage. We'll, let, we'll allow the, the foundation walls to set up for 24 hours. We'll come back tomorrow and start to pull the forms off so that the walls can, the walls can cure um, from both sides. Oh, and if you're wondering about this beard. <laughs> you're just going to do this. Well, you know, you know, the funny thing is, is that we bought this property and we literally left that day for a Florida trip and I forgot my razor. And that's when you stopped shaving. That's when I stopped shaving. And that's why this is happening. So the beard will continue. Mm -hmm. It's the playoffs, baby. <laughs> the beard. 